Thanks for that introduction. I'm very excited to be here uh, from Uber's data visualization and urban computing team. Talk about how we are using urban computing and how we're really embracing open source to do that. Let me start really briefly by giving an overview of what, at a high level, urban computing is. So from an urban aspect, urban computing is about tackling challenges that cities have across a broad area of safety, road infrastructure, equitable access to transportation, energy consumption, traffic congestion, tons of applications of how we see urban computing can be used. In terms of how we approach that, urban computing really starts from data across a wide variety of heterogeneous sources. So that can be data from sensors, it could be data that's collected from incidents or government agencies. We combine that data together. We use data science uh, to analyze it, aggregate it, process it. We use data visualization techniques to provide insights into that data, again, so that we can tackle challenges that cities may have across a variety of different areas. So that's at a high level what urban computing is. To help uh, that sink in, I want to just walk through a really brief example of um, how we're thinking about urban computing in the context of transportation. So for context, uh, this graph right here shows over the last de decade tra traffic fatalities. Uh, we can see that it was declining since 2007, and then in 2015 and 16, there was an increase in traffic fatalities, about 5% year over year. And uh, transportation decision makers, policy makers, um, they had some information about this, but they didn't have a lot of detailed granular insight into what was leading to this. Um, even more specifically, uh, there was an incident on um, December 27th, 2017. Traffic fatality killed a 17-year-old passenger at, uh, in New York City at the, the corner of Canal and Bowery Street. Uh, this is a tragic incident. And I bring this up because um, in, from this specific example here, we can start to, using urban computing, glean some important insights and use those insights more broadly to understand potentially what's leading to these traffic increase in traffic fatalities. So uh, the US Department of Transportation knows that of the 40,000 traffic fatalities a year, um, over 10,000 of those are caused by speeding, and speeding is the primary factor in this. So um, this visualization up here um, is showing um, Manhattan, New York City, where Uber operates. And it's uh, also illustrating how we're using urban computing to really um, provide insights into how people are moving about a city. So you can see that there's, um, there's uh, road segments colored here and um, uh, scatter plots of data points. So this is bringing that heterogeneous uh, collection of data from different sources and combining it together into a single visualization. Uh, the red dots here are traffic fatalities uh, from the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um, there's yellow dots that are also bringing in data from uh, the New York City Police Department. And then um, the blue road segments, blue, uh, yellow, and red, is um, data that Uber has processed from GPS sensors, uh, GPS signals from our drivers moving around the city, um, combined that together, processed it, anonymized it, aggregated it, um, to be able to provide information about uh, average vehicle speeds down to um, a high degree of granularity in both space and time. So this is zooming in on the site of that accident canal on Bowery Street, um, where we're seeing um, two sources of data here, and we see that uh, certain road segments here are, um, we, we can see that it's, it's data combined over, uh, down to road segment granularity, and also hour by hour. And we can see that there's particular road segments here where we have significant speed um, above the, the speed limit all hours of the day. We can start to use that information to see that there's other similar, provide insights into where there's other similar parts of the city that may be having, uh, we're seeing that same type of uh, vehicle speed behavior. Maybe they don't have the same type of traffic fatalities or other, the other sources of data there, but 
uh, transportation decision makers and policy makers can really use this data to not only get retrospective insight, but also start to use the visualization tools, to start to explore how they can use this to find other areas where they can uh, impact meaningful change. So again, that's just one example of how we're exploring um, using data acquisition, data science, visualization, simulation, combining those together into this theme of urban computing. Um, Uber's thinking about urban computing more than just uh, safety, but also congestion, pollution, uh, increasing and providing more equitable access to transportation. So um, I really wanna talk a little bit more about how we're doing that and how we're doing that with open source. So the previous visualizations were all created using Kepler GL for cities. So this is an open source uh, web-based visualization tool that we've created at Uber. Uh, it's open, it's free, it's fast, it's easy to use, it's web-based. Um, it actually doesn't require any uh, programming to use, so it's the customers for it are data scientists, engineers, urban planners, researchers, civic hackers. Uh, basically, you can drag and drop um, data into this web-based tool, free and open source web-based tool, and powering it is um, high performance uh, computer graphics based WebGL um, code that's basically able to render millions of data points in a really high performance way in the web browser. So that's Kepler GL for cities and this is uh, what the previous visualizations were, were created with. Underlying um, Kepler GL is a whole set of visualization frameworks um, that are powering it. So it's kind of the foundation of uh, Uber's urban computing platform. Um, these frameworks are suited for a variety of applications. Um, they're largely web-based and they're largely around just being able to um, display data, uh, millions of data points really performantly in the web browser. And there's a lot of geospatial visualization use cases for this, but you can also see that they're powerful enough to uh, be applied to some related areas that are potentially related to urban computing and transportation, like self-driving car visualization. We've just recently open sourced um, our autonomous visualization system, which is a set of components uh, and a visualization standard for autonomous vehicle systems. Um, the other aspect of this I wanna to touch on is data and how Uber is trying to provide anonymized data for over two billion trips to really help our urban planners around the world. So we're doing that through our investments in what we call the Uber movement platform. So um, this is an open platform where we're providing data for regulators, policymakers, researchers, civic hackers, and we're doing this in a way that is very privacy-minded. Um, so we anonymize and aggregate that data in a way so that um, the regulators and policymakers can um, glean useful insights for it and use it for their urban computing needs. So that's a broad overview of some of the specific technologies and specific open source software frameworks that we're building, software frameworks and tools. Um, as we've built this technology, we're starting to see that we're getting like a, a, a groundswell or attention from like a, a community of developers uh, who are noticing this and starting to use it in their applications. So, um, you know, we're, we're seeing that through people actively contributing, uh, participating in the conversation, contributing code on our open source GitHub repos, which is really exciting to see. Um, we're really starting to focus on fostering this and creating a, a broader ecosystem around this um, through really improving our documentation, making these things more accessible and spreading awareness of them. Uh, we're also teaching courses in, in uh, data visualization at universities, engaging with researchers and academic institutions civic hackers. So that's where we are right now. I think we are, we can see a lot of potential in what urban computing is, and we know that open source is at the core of this. So we have partnerships with governments, external companies, researchers, uh, the open source community, but we really want to, we see the future, a lot of potential in terms of accelerating and expanding an ecosystem around these tools. So um, we're exploring creating like a neutral foundation to accelerate this using the open governance models, the support and guidance and help from the Linux Foundation. 
Um, and the real goal of this is to create a framework for the long-term growth, sustainable, uh, sustainability, stewardship, and technical improvement of these tools and frameworks for urban computing. Um, and so we, we can't do it alone. So we're here to talk about this, start to spread awareness of this, and also ask for interest about it. So if you're interested in helping with this, uh, we can't do it alone. Please come and um, talk to us. You can drop us a line at the Linus Foundation slash project slash urban computing. Um, and I think that there's a lot of potential to really help cities and citizens improve the lives of everybody in, the, um, in our cities through, through really um, building this sustainable growing ecosystem around urban computing in the future. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Let me get that. Hold on one second. You know, <clears throat> one of the things I love about this project is you've got an open source uh, set of projects, but you also have a data sharing project, which I think is really, really interesting. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this in the future, but you're like an early adopt, you know, sort of vanguard for taking data, anonymizing it, sharing it. Uh, so it's sort of open source, uh, but applied to, to data. So awesome stuff. We Thank look you. forward to working with you. Thank you much. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> again, I think if you look at it, open source, open data, open data is going to be a new big trend that we're going to see more and more of.